Ah, it's that time of the year again, summertime in San Diego. What better place to be? Skies are blue, it's hotter than heck. Man, oh man, great times. From heading to North Park and enjoying the great sights like Blue Foot Bar, right? It's one of the best places to go and play pool and slug back a drink, I tell you what. Even to go to Golden Hill for Pizzeria Luigi, my God, they have the best pizza, no joke. Head over to Little Italy for Not Not Tacos. They're not not tacos. And of course, University Heights with the Pop Pie Company. But let's be honest, I know most of you are going to see this and go, we're just coming here for the in and out because it's San Diego Comic-Con time, baby. And we got some brand new exclusives to talk about straight from my friends over at NECA Toys. This is going to be quite the great time because we have new gremlins. We got Universal Monsters. We got ALF. He's back, but no longer in pog form. And, of course, a brand new box set featuring the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from the third movie. We all remember that one. But dang, they make for some great action figures, am I right? Now, do keep in mind, there is a fifth Negatoys Comic-Con 2023 exclusive in the form of Kino from the TMNT2, The Secret of the Ooze movie. Comes with a scooter, comes with all the pizza pies that you can have, delivered by Michelangelo, constantly calling him up, yada yada. Unfortunately, he was not available just yet as a press sample as of this video, but rest assured, for those of you heading to Comic-Con, 3545 is the booth number, so you can go and pick it up from NECA Toys themselves when you're going there. But in the meantime, we got plenty here to check out, so this is going to be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. Happy 4th of July, by the way, right? We tend to forget these little things called holidays when we got all these new toys to look at. This is a look at the brand new NECA Toys San Diego Comic-Con exclusives. Here we go. Now, first and foremost, we're going to start spreading the news because we have the new NECA Toys San Diego Comic-Con 2023 exclusive straight from Gremlins 2, the new batch. We got Greta Gremlin in her red showgirl dress. It's standard Gremlins 2 box. Gremlins 2, the new batch on one side. On the back side, glorious photos. This figure does Pop, it's very glamorous, right? Lots of reds and greens. You can read up on Gremlins 2 if you want. A little bit of a recap. And like I said, nice photos adorn the box every which way. And in true NECA Toys fashion, it's got the little box opening thing right there. You get to see the figure. You get to see a nice photo of said figure. It's happening, right? It's it's uh, it's very nice, right? It's packaging. You're gonna throw it away anyways. But on the bottom side of the box, here's everyone involved with the creation of this particular figure. So thank you very much for that. And if you are interested, if you're heading to San Diego Comic Con, this is gonna set you back 50 bucks at the Comic Con booth for NECA Toys. So again, if you want one, you can grab Greta Gremlin in her red showgirl attire. And here she is all out of the packaging, looking ultra-fabulous. Of course, Greta is just one of those disturbing gremlins, right? All the way around, but hey, they make for great action figures, right? Now, she does come with some hands, extra hands. I always paint it nicely. You got the greens, you got the yellows, you got the terrifyingly long red fingernails, right? To gouge out your eyes. But she does come with a little red hair clip. Now, this in particular, it's got the clippy part, which totally works. But I think it just needed a little bit more definition because it kind of looks like a red blotch. You know what I mean? But Greta herself. You got the face. You got the hair. <laughs> it's, it's terrifying. But glamorous, I'm sure, at the same time. Now, I would have preferred a different open mouth expression, something like that, to just kind of match the film because it's basically the same head portrait. But they did add the little clips and bobs to her ears on either side. So I like that. You get the same articulation in the head and the ears and everything else. You just kind of have to work with the hair. Maybe you can grab one of your kids' Barbie combs, right, and help you out. Now, she does come with a rather large boa. It's removable. It's not bendy wire or anything like that, and you're going to constantly see a little flex of the feathered material flaking off every which way, but it stays on for the most part. And she's got a very rhinestoned out dress. Well sewn. As for someone that doesn't sew at all, I'm just assuming, right? But it stays on the figure. It looks nice. She's got plenty of paint, all the little blues and yellows and all the accents. And on the bottom, you get more of that boa material. And then underneath that is her actual dress, which 
the bottom part, it does have a bendy wire. You get all the articulation you can expect. The dress does not hinder the figure's articulation at all, but she becomes kind of top heavy with the dress. You kind of have to move it around, make it fit for you in that sense. Maybe proper up. A stand would have been handy, just saying. But in the backside, yeah, you get to see it's a little bit longer. So you can kind of work with it so that you can stand her up and get her going. But I do like the material. It's very well done. It's nicely stitched. Like I said, the feet, they yeah, can be kind of cumbersome because she's in heels. That's like with any figure. She's kind of back heavy with the whole head thing. But you get the boa going. You get her hair going. You put the little clip in there. Bingo, bango. Yeah, you got yourself one lovely gremlin, we'll just say. <laughs> So I think the ultimate detractor would have been a nice new head portrait, something like that to kind of reflect the movie a little bit better. Maybe a movable jaw. That would have been kind of cool to see. And just to kind of show you, here's the difference between the original Greta Gremlin and now this new San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. This is actually the third version because there was a wedding dress Greta Gremlin that was a San Diego Comic-Con 2022 exclusive last year. But as you can see, Various parts and pieces change out. The heads are largely the same, everything else. But equally as cool looking Greta Gremlins. And just to kind of show you how they match up with other very cloth goods to out Gremlins, right? From the Santa Gremlin to the baseball Gremlin. Every year now at Christmas time, I've kind of done a thing where I pull out all the Gremlins and we have a good Christmas display. So in all honesty, with this red dress, it'll stand out a little bit more, be a little bit more Christmassy. Yeah, it definitely more of a risque way, right? I'm sure people coming over for the holidays would be like, hmm, that is interesting. But if you are interested in Greta Gremlin, she's a great Comic-Con exclusive. She's not one that's detrimental if you don't get it for your collection, but it's great to say that if you do want her for the old collection, she's a pretty solid figure. Now, continuing on with the Comic-Con exclusives, we're sticking with the whole horror theme, but this time around, we're going a little bit more vintage style, looking at the old Remco Universal Monsters and that very cool classic card back that they used to have. So we're going with the creature from the Black Lagoon. But this time around, just as the old Frankenstein from Remco, he's glow in the dark, baby. Right there on the card, glows in the dark. And I'm gonna tell you what, he does definitely glow in the dark. If you don't wanna remove this figure from the packaging, you set him in the sunlight for about 20 minutes. It's like a radioactive Mr. Burns on a Friday night, right? On the back side of the card, you get some glorious black and white artwork. All the different write-ups. Collect the whole creepy crew. The mummy, the wolfman. You get the idea. And we have all the figures thus far. Minus the bride, of course. But here's everyone involved with the creation of this figure. So thank you very much for that. And for those of you heading to Comic-Con, if you are interested, 30 bucks we'll get you going with the creature from the Black Lagoon. So, very cool, but you're here for the figure itself. So let's pull him out of the packaging, and here he is. He doesn't come with much, just as a heads up. I believe in the listing they had mentioned he comes with extra hands, something to that degree. He does not, it's just a figure. But it's a well-sculpted figure, and much like Greta Gremlin, I'll tell you right off the bat, he's not imperative to the collection. It's one that you go, yeah, okay, I like glow in the dark, right? So that works. And just to kind of give you a different view, we're going to have normal vision and glow-in-the-dark vision to show off all that great articulation, which the head portrait does get a lot of. Lots of neck action, so he definitely can swim and do all that great stuff. The arms, they will go all the way up. Nothing hindered, nothing you have to heat up. It's pretty solid overall. He does have double-jointed scaly elbows, which I like how they did that. He's all pinless. He's got this wonderful ab articulation, ab crunch, right? Perfect, again, for all the swimming poses. And I just like how he's layered, right? He's kind of segmented like a bug, and I totally dig that. He's got a bit of a diaper, which is rubber, so you can make it work with the legs. He doesn't have anything at the thigh, but he does have double-jointed knees, and he will spin at the knee as well as soon as I get this foot out of the way you can actually see the figure and what we're doing here and then he's got the feet so they'll go up down left right rock to and fro and like I said 
He glows plenty in the dark, which is always nice to see. And if you got a flight stand for him, he's a little bit heavy, so get a very secure flight stand, but you can get him swimming through any black lagoon that you want to get him going in. So it's very cool. I like the posability on this guy. Plus, he glows in the dark. That's totally fun. And what is actually really fun is all the articulation, so you can recreate all those famous monster movies from when Frankenstein met the creature from the Black Lagoon and then kicked him in the face, right? <laughs> For those of you that want to see the articulation, yes, he could be a karate creature from the Black Lagoon. But what's really cool is that if you have been collecting all the Universal Monsters, he's a little bit of a different take, a little bit of a different color scheme, let's be honest. But all the different monsters, all the lineup, but he's a big standout in more ways than one. He's the tallest, even towering over Frankenstein, so very cool lineup. And what's a lot of fun for me is that you can get, get the lights down low, get some strobe light effects going, and have yourself a true monster mash. So again, like I said, it's not one of those figures that's gonna destroy the completeness of your collection if you don't grab this creature from the Black Lagoon, the glow-in-the-dark version, but if you do, it will illuminate your collection, right, so to speak, so you can pick him up when you head to San Diego Comic-Con 2023. Now I'll tell you honestly, out of the two we've just seen, and to save you some time, the turtles are great, right? I'll just save you time. It's great if you're getting those thumbs up. But Alf, god dang it. Alf is the best one at his entire lineup. He's the one I've had the most fun with. He's got the best packaging to him. It's Alf, right? And boy, are his arms tired because he just flew into the planet Melmac for, <laughs> for Cosmic Con. Glorious photos. Set your phasers to stunning it's the 80s to the early 90s, brought to life again in 2023. Again, the packaging is stellar. All the photos, everything that he comes with. You hear the excitement in my voice. You can read up on old Alf right there and the Tanner family. To all my adoring fans, nice convention. When do we eat? Cats, I'm sure. And he comes with the Melmac Cosmic Con intergalactic bag. Here's everything that this figure comes with. But rest assured, we're going to look at this one in exquisite detail. And you got the open and shut box just like that. And I just like everything that's happening here. It's just Alf. It's Alf's personality all over this box. You get to see Alf in the box if you don't want to open him up. But you're not here for that. We need to take him out of the packaging proper. 40 bucks is what Alf from the Ultimate Cosmic Con 2023 is going to set you back. But like I said, from the accessories to the sheer nostalgic aspect of Alf, I mean, look at this figure. <laughs> this is amazing. The accessories sell this figure for me. This is so much dang fun. And plus, it's Alf. I don't get the appeal of Alf, but yet here we are, right? He comes with a bunch of extra hands. He's got basically finger-pointed and weapon-holding hands if you want. Various Comic-Con item-holding hands, right? So the whole shebang. And one of my favorite aspects is the Melmac Cosmic-Con Intergalactic Tote Bag. Like, the most recent Comic-Cons have been given out. So you got the straps, the bag opens... You can put stuff in there if you want. Like if you went to Cosmic Con and found yourself a really cool He-Man, yeah, he'll fit right there in the bag. He comes with one gnarly 80s, kind of early 90s cell phone. My God, is that glorious. From the buttons to the paint, be careful the antenna, it looks very brittle, but it's awesome. As is the old school camera with the flash and the strap that goes around his neck. It's just awesome. It's the 80s mixed with 2023 all over again, right? The paint, much like the cell phone, is exquisite. The tension to detail, the sculpt itself, it doesn't move, but it's awesome. And it comes with a pair of just flat black shades. There's not a whole heck of a lot to these. There's really nothing on the backside either. But the reflective part is what matters on the front. And it comes with next to the bag, right? This old school video camera and I totally remember my pops having one of these everything is sculpted in everything that you remember it's stellar right so that's where you push the button you pop the tape in there you got the reflective lens it's freaking awesome nothing moves on this just FYI but you do have the little strap you can fit right there into Alf's hand so he can hold it he holds it perfectly you'll soon see all that but again you hear the excitement of my voice this is fun. Alf is a great character. This is the perfect Cosmic Con 2023 exclusive. Wink, wink, right? And he comes with the floral shirt. 
He's got his big old clod hopper padded feet, all the fur. He's very much a Chewbacca, right? He's got his little tail. <laughs> He's got his Trader Joe's shirt going on. And I love this. It's the Cosmic Con lanyard. It's perfect. What I would have absolutely loved but on the back, he had a little code, right? A little scanny thing. That would have been awesome. Just, just to add a little oomph to it, but it's perfect for what it is. You got plenty of articulation in the old ALF head. So you have it at the base of the neck and then the head itself. His mouth opens and closes like the Muppet that he is. Very cool. The sculpt is there. The detail is there. The shirt does not hinder any of the articulation, especially in the arms. I love it. And if you want to see, you can kind of sort of roll up the sleeve right here. He has a very interesting double-jointed elbow situation, right, where all the fur... He's just kind of like Creature from the Black Lagoon. He's very segmented, but it works. He's got the wrist. It spins. It rocks. It does all that great stuff. You can swap out the hands easy peasy. No problemos there. But just go easy, I would say, in some of the joints. Nothing that had to be heated up, but you don't want to jump the gun right off the bat. He does have some waist and some abs, we'll just say. Now, when he has the shirt on, it's like, eh, how can I see what I'm doing? The shirt is Velcro, so you can open it up and you can see that, yeah, this is kind of how he works. He rocks. He does all that great stuff. So it's very cool to have that option. But why would you want to take the floral shirt off? It looks good as is, right? And I love the buttons, the stitching. Everything looks good. Neck is nailing it with all the stitchings, right? <laughs> all the cloth goods. He does have, again, a weird system. Just get to know it before you start just doing whatever. But you got the whole double-jointed knees. You got the big clod hopper feet. Yes, this is what Alf's feet look like. Like when on the show, when he was in full mode, he wasn't hiding behind a table or something like that. It was a person in a suit. Go back and watch the show. You'll see it. But yeah, just stellar all the way around. And again, this figure is perfection in the sense of it's a true Comic-Con exclusive because of the situation it deals with and you get to see how he kind of scales with all these other brands and companies and whatnot so he definitely works he's more in that six inch scale but the accessories themselves is again what sells this figure for me from having all the different cosplay figures wink wink in your collection lined up grabbing a Funko Pop or whatever and then you got Alf in the corner videotaping, right? This is what is fun. This is what's going to make for some great photography. And you got all these cameras, like this old school camera. You can have him talking with Galactus, right? Of course, Galactus would be at the Melmac Cosmic Con, of course, right? You have all the different vehicles in your collection walking through Comic Con, as we usually do, right? He's on his giant cell phone. I can't believe I saw the Punisher van, right? The Ecto-1 is here. We've all done it. We're all nerds. Have him standing in front of Castle Grayskull with He-Man wearing some shades, trying to act all tough and mighty like Alf would do. It's just, it's a lot of fun. Alf is the epitome of pop culture, and he fits in so well with all these action figures. Who would have thunk it? And for bonus points, if you could tell me what these three hail from all together, well, you can have them meet up right on the floor of the Melmac Cosmic Con and show each other all the great finds that they came across while keeping kids off of drugs. Hands down, this is my favorite of the lineup. Definitely pick up Alf. But I get it. From Gremlins to Alf to Creatures from Black Lagoons, you're really here for one thing. And that's to talk about the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 VHS box sets. And a faithful recreation of the original box they have done once again. Minus the used sticker, of course. But they are back in time for their newest action figures and you got really nice photos of the figures on the front. On all the sides, you got the yellow box, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3. On the back side of the first box, which is the slipcase cover, we'll just say nice photos, write-ups. You got the Yes Have Some Podcast quotes right there. Very nice. Congrats on that. And you got a nice little write-up of the movie with the figures. We all remember this movie, right? Here's everything the box comes with. It's a lot. This is why this video is going to be extra long. And here's everyone involved with the creation of these figures. So thank you very much for that. Now, like I said, this is a slipcase cover like all the other VHS box sets. So that pops off. 
And you get to see all four figures. And you get Leonardo looking all stellar. You got Donatello and his Corey Feldman goodness. Raphael and, of course, the lovable Mikey. And, uh, yeah, like I said, you can't even really see all the weapons and accessories in this box just yet. Now, as you can see, slip the case. You got the whole shebang going right. On the back side of that box, you got more photos. You got all kinds of nice accents here and there. Very old school looking. Inside the box, I'll save it for you. It's kind of cool. I like the artwork, but some things are better left to be a little bit more surprised. So I definitely like the inside artwork. So if you'd like, at Comic-Con, this box set for San Diego Comic-Con 2023 is going to set you back $150. And I'm going to be honest with you, if you want TMNT3 and you want every single accessory known to man, <laughs> this is the box set for you. My God, they have packed the heck out of this box. You got four figures and you got all the different accessories. This is going to take a while. So I hope you're sitting back and relaxing with a nice cup of coffee, right? I told you to do that before we started. We got to do it proper, but we've got extra head portraits. We've got, you know what? Let's just, I'll just show you. Let's just start, right? So you got extra hands, weapon holding, item holding, everything. Fisted hands. Everything's painted nicely. I'll give it to him. No problems whatsoever. Swapping the hands is pretty easy. For Mikey, I would go more for the tighter grip. The ones that he comes with are a little bit too loose, but in either case, yes, you get a dozen hands to then fit with the various Ninja Turtle figures. You get a couple extra old school swords. Very cool. I'm not going to pretend I know about swords. Cutlass. Is that one of them? Who cares? They're nicely painted. I like this one. It protects your hand from getting it chopped off when you're fencing and fighting with a sword like a pirate would, right? So that's very cool. And then you have the Time Scepter. Straight from the movie. The pristine, brand new, ready for its first trip through time, Time Scepter. Beautiful paint all over. You got the plastic glass, right? That was a nice reflective aspect. You got all the Japanese writing on the side of it. It's very well done. I'm impressed. And if you want, you can break cannon and have whatever character you want holding it. But you can have a cool version of Casey Jones holding the scepter. As with the broken time scepter, which again, very well done. You got broken glass. You have the dip in the whole top part of it as it's busted and hanging on for dear life. And as you clearly see, the busted one, the good looking one, it looks great. Two of the best accessories in the box. And like I said, much like Casey Jones, you can have April O'Neil holding the time scepter, right? So you can get matching time scepters. <laughs> and then you have the homemade time scepter, which again, very cool. We should have got Renette holding these time scepters, right? Of course. But very well done. Nice weathering. It looks great. They didn't have to go this hard with these things, but it looks stellar. And you can get old Splinter holding the time scepter. So all three time scepters unite. Some of the best in the box. Very well done. Exquisitely painted. And you get a couple extra head portraits, which are primarily for TMNT1 and TMNT2. Not TMNT3, these samurai versions. Just FYI. So you got alternate heads for Donnie, Mikey. All of them are well painted. All of them look great. In particular, I really love Raph's. It's more of that grit and teeth, angry looking Raph. So I definitely appreciate that. And then you have Leonardo, which, yeah, I'll wait till I pop the head on one of the bodies. I think it looks better until you pop it on. I mean, don't get me wrong. The paint's great. Everything else looks great, but... You'll see in just a second. But like I said, you got all four of these new heads. We're getting spoiled by NECA recently. I like when you get alternate head portraits for all the different characters already in your collection. It really livens them up, right? So if you took the Secret of the Use figures and popped all the heads off and popped these on, you kind of have a round of angry movie turtles, which is a little bit different. Although I would say, in all honesty, Leonardo kind of looks like a cracked out turtle, right? It's not my favorite of the bunch. Raphael definitely takes the cake. The others, they work, but it's for those of you who want more of an angrier movie turtle, right? And just to kind of show you, between TMNT1 and in the back, TMNT2 with the new head portraits, yes, you can swip swap between the two of these, but they will not go for these new samurai turtles. They do not fit. Now, speaking of which, for the weapons accessories, you get Donatello's bow staff, which... It's pretty much a Donatello's bow staff. It's got nice paint to it. And 
utilizing all the different corresponding hands. You can swip swap them out, do whatever you like, but he definitely holds it nicely. You get two nunchucks for Michelangelo. They do have a bit of a bendy wire. It's not insanely bendy, but you get the idea. It works for what it is. And I would say for the packaged hands that Mikey comes with, swap them out for the other version of the hand so he has a tighter grip. That's what I found work the best. Then you have twin pair of Psy, right? Don't say size, people will comment. But you have really nice paint on the Psy, and you have the various hands for Raphael, which he can do the really cool holding it look, right? Or you could do the standard look, right? It doesn't matter either which way, but he does hold his weapons accordingly. As with Leonardo, you get a pair of katanas, which are no different, but they look great, nicely painted. You got silver, yada, yada, nice blade. As always with Leonardo's katanas, go very easy. You don't want to snap anything. But I like that he has the weapon storage. In fact, he's the only turtle with weapon storage. But with the head portrait, doesn't exactly match. But it's more in the vein of TMNT3, let's be honest. Which, now we have the samurai helmets and the samurai masks. The helmets are all the same. So no matter which one you grab, they're all going to look the same. But the paint is nice. The little top part is insanely sharp, so be careful. The little foldy things that come out, nicely weathered, nicely painted. You'll see how they kind of connect. They sort of kind of snap onto the back of the headband when you have it on his head. They don't all stay, but they stay pretty much without having to utilize that for the most part. Then you have the masks for each of the turtles. Each one is a little bit different. You can fit whatever mask you want on whatever turtle. It doesn't matter. But you have that mustache and you got the little bit of a goatee thing going on. And nice weathering, right? Very cool looking. And as you can see the difference, there's one with a brown. There's one with a purple mustache. You can put purple with Donatello. It really doesn't matter unless you're a stickler for that. But each of the masks, no matter which one you want to use for whichever turtle, will fit. It's one mask fits all right and it just kind of slips over the head i'll show you all that in just a few on top of all those accessories you get the robes <laughs> and you get four of them because well, you got four turtles and they're nicely done they're a decent enough fabric they're a little bit light they're definitely not taffeta they're definitely cloth but be very careful with the cuts and how they're kind of angled you don't want to tear anything do anything like that Trust me, we'll talk more about that in just a few. But the pattern, the design, it's got a little bit of a bendy wire in the sleeves that run down the sides. Nothing in the back as far as bendy wire. But to get them on, just like you're putting an action figure jacket on, it's the same thing as usual. Now, just to show you Leonardo, we'll start this off. Leo looks pretty good. And I'll tell you, all the body types are the same, minus the fact that Leonardo has the weapon storage glued to the back. The head portraits are primarily the only thing that are different, and they are very much TMNT3, complete with all the weird animatronic movement in the mouths, right? But the details, the paints, everything that you see here is individually painted, weathered, the clothes. He's got a nice design pattern on the back. NECA Toys always goes above and beyond for these things. And we all know that eventually, if you don't get them for Comic-Con, as they've always done in the past, they always release two packs later on or however they're going to do it, if they do it. But I would just be patient. Don't freak out. You'll eventually get these turtles somehow, some way. But just to reiterate, it has lots of shading on this. It brings these characters to life. TMNT3 is <laughs> by furthest from my favorite movie for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles but dang nabbit, they make for great action figures. And you can see the weapon storage on the back, which fits both of his katanas nicely, beautifully. It looks great overall. Leonardo is a pretty solid figure. Just to kind of show you, the robe for Leonardo is a little bit different. He does have little tees that are cut out on the back so that you can slip the sheath in and then be able to still use his weapons. I did run into a snag. Because you cannot heat this plastic up, it is rigid plastic. Tried hair dryer, tried the hot water. It's next to near impossible to fit all the different sheaths through the various four holes. You can get two going up or two going down. If any of you out there, when you get this figure, if you figure out the trick, do let me know. But what I ended up doing, because I don't want to tear any of the holes, is I fit the top part of the sheaths through the sleeves. It gets a little bunchy. But it's in the back. And I'm going to be quite honest with you. I'd rather look bunchy in the back 
than to have it tear, right? Because there's nothing worse than breaking something right out of the box. Now, I'll tell you, it would have been nice if they maybe made it a little bit easier to kind of do this kind of thing. Again, it might be user error on my part. By all means, let me know in the comments. But for what I'm going for and the frustration, that's totally fine. I'm going with that, but just keep that in mind with this Leonardo. Now, with Raphael, again, the body type is the exact same. The only difference will be the head portrait, which I'll show you in just a few. Yeah, you get plenty of articulation out of. All the head portraits are very goofy on these turtles, but it's very befitting of TMNT3, let's be honest. You'll see on the bag, you get to see his shell, whereas opposed to Leonardo, you had to have the weapon storage. So for the next three turtles, this is what it's going to look like. Leonardo's the only one with the weapon storage. But same exact weathering, same exact paint, same exact body, through and through, always. It's four turtles, all the same, minus Leonardo. Next up is Michelangelo, which... I think he gets the second best head portrait out of the group. Mikey's supposed to be fun. He's fun loving. He's got the big wide eyes. As much as those animatronics and such did not work for to benefit that movie, again, makes for great action figures. And like I said, you get to see the shell, all the wrappings, all the armor, the plating. It looks great. So it definitely is nice to see. They definitely did not skimp on any of the paint between any of the bodies. But again, from head portraits aside, yeah, that's going to be the only difference between all these turtles. And lastly, with Donatello, who I think gets the best head portrait, friendly Donatello. Good old Corey Feldman, right? Returns to the titular role. But yeah, he's smiling. He's got the teeth. He's got the big wide eyes. A little bit terrifying, but hey, that's what makes for a fun-looking action figure, right? So just to kind of show you all the various articulation between all four bodies... You get nice articulation in the neck, kind of rock to and fro. Just be careful of the bandanas. Those can get kind of snagged sometimes on the arms and whatnot when you're moving them around. The bandanas, Leonardo's moves a little bit, but the rest don't move. So just keep that in mind, at least on mine. Right here, like I said, make sure you move the bandanas when you're moving the arms. The arms, you get nice articulation out of. They'll go all the way up. The armor does not hinder anything. You have single-jointed elbows Spins at the elbow, nice articulation in the elbow, we'll just say. But that's one area where I would say go easy at first. Those were the hardest to move. I didn't have to heat them up, but just go very easy, along with the wrists, especially when you swap out the hands. Now, with the waist, he just sort of spins, right? I wouldn't say there's much in the way of ab crunch at all. Kind of sort of rocks a little bit, but doesn't really do anything, let's be honest. They're big armored turtles at this point. The legs... You can get them out to a various degree, right? Kind of sort of the splits, but not really. Single jointed knees, and they will spin at the knee as well. It's not double jointed, so don't stress it too far. And like I said, you get a nice spin out of it. All the different armor, nothing hinders it. Everything is very rubbery, so there's no problem. There's no thigh, though. And then you have the feet, which, of course, will go up, down, and they will swivel side to side with peg holes on the bottom of the feet. So if you got some stands for these guys, hey, make them look all fancy on your toy shelf, right? So very cool nonetheless. But we got to get these guys armored up already. So make sure you get your corresponding jackets, right? Leonardo's the one with all the holes in the back. To put the masks on, easy peasy. Simply just slip that over the back till it meets the bandana knot, right? Then it goes over his face. Each of the turtles you can do this no problemo it's actually really fun it stays on there perfectly so definitely appreciate that you get the helmet going clips on and bingo bango you got yourself four killer looking action figures from one of the worst ninja turtles movie on the planet <laughs> it's very nostalgic now don't get me wrong but back then we all knew as kids like wh where's shredder where's krang and bebop and Anything that resembles Ninja Turtles, right? But they made for great action figures, wink, wink. And just to kind of show you, takes you back to a better day. Nice memories of hanging out with my pops. You have Samurai Leonardo through all the ages. And now you got this really cool TMNT3 Samurai Leonardo. So I definitely think Leonardo is my favorite. You know, as you get older, you change the turtles. Leonardo is my favorite now. But to kind of switch out what actually happened in TMNT3 for a better version in the whole headcanon that you can come up with, 
Sky's the limit with all these action figures, right? Like, going back in time to fight an ancestor of Shredder, right? Something like that. Or Shredder's been messing with time, and you have to stop him. A la the video game, right? You could do that. Or for whatever reason, Super Shredder survives, and there you go. You could do something with that. But it's really cool to see, from TMNT3 to Secret of the Ooze to the Coming Out of Their Shells tour to the original movie... What a friggin' collection of movie turtles. They look like little tiny people in little tiny suits. My hat's off to you, NECA toys. So, that's gonna wrap it up for my early look at some of the brand new Comic-Con 2023 NECA toys exclusives. And again, thank you to NECA toys for sending these out for the purposes of this video. Overall, it's a pretty stellar lineup of San Diego exclusives, right? You have the Turtles, which I think everyone's gonna definitely want. You have Greta Gremlin, you got the Creature from the Black Lagoon that are very fun exclusives, but not totally imperative, nor a total loss if you don't pick them up for your collection. And then you have, of course, the greatest one, Alf. Hands down, he is my favorite. He's so dang pop culture-y. I absolutely love him. And the accessories, too. But as always, you've heard my thoughts. And now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below. Let me know. Let's talk everything Comic-Con 2023. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, have a very safe and fun 4th of July. And for those of you venturing out to Comic-Con this year, are you looking for a cool place to eat, grab a drink? Hey, I'm happy to make some recommendations. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.